Well, I'm having a fascinating morning. I think if we blend together Jim's keynote that he gave us, and we also take into account the presentations that we've just heard, I think what we're hearing is that good communication can help us to swing from bow to bow, from vine to vine throughout the jungle. But I think what we also heard from Jim is that we need to swing, perhaps not like Tarzan, but actually like Jane. And I think that the change in our communication, thank you for the girls laughing in the audience, and I think that the change in our communication that that should drive is really important. I think that's what I'm hearing from my colleagues. And it is really important to hear from one another and to share what we're doing. Because we have a shared, a shared desire to support researchers and we have a shared desire to advance discovery. And that's really important to us all as STM publishers. And so it is good to share, and I wanted to share some of the things that are impacting on us, on us all, as we, as we face the changes that are raging all around us. So what we've done at Wiley is to try to think about some of those changes that are impacting on research and the future of research. We try to think about some of the future-facing trends and really how that might impact our communication. So none of these changes, we've done a piece of work, none of these changes that I'm going to reflect back to you will be a surprise. But there are many different changes. We've seen through our research that we've done, faster change, networked endeavor and discovery, dispersed innovation, cooperative technology development, evidence-based practice, citizen science. All of these trends are really impacting on the whole future of research and beginning to change it. But we wanted to get behind some of these headlines. And so what we did was to talk to some future thinking, some forward thinking innovators, and to ask them what they thought that this would mean for research. And this plays back beautifully to the theme of the conference that we're having today about resilience and reinvention. Because what we heard was the absolute resilience of many of the basic scientific principles which aren't going to change. It's the core of the business that, that won't change, but also very much about reinvention. So I'll, tell, I'll give you a few of the quotes that we heard from some of our innovators. Gilad is, a, um, is an innovator in, in big data, in visualization and analysis. And what he said was, it's crucial for advancing discovery that others are able to reproduce your findings in a true scientific manner. Back to resilience, absolutely core scientific principle. Usman has been very involved in developing the Internet of Things. And what he said was, the quickest route to scientific advancement is creating opportunities for people to start building on top of the research that others have already done. Again, absolutely core scientific principle. Yasser is the founder of the NOAA project, which I expect many of you are familiar with, in which experts and citizens collaborate to identify wildlife. And he's much more about reinvention. The more opportunity there is for people to socialize around their research projects, the more potential there is for breakthroughs. In my mind, there's no reason why network, networked collaboration shouldn't be happening on a large scale right now. But I think that what's common amongst all of these, these, these quotes that I've given to you is that there's a focus on the interaction between scientists. And that interaction really is common throughout all of the trends that we've seen. It is an overarching trend towards open science. And I think open science incorporates open access, incorporates open data. And my suggestion to us all is that it should be supported by a parallel trend towards open communication. And what does this mean for publishers? We've all rightly been focused on lots of conversations. We've been immersed in conversations about open access. When we start to see that as, as a part of a broader trend towards open science, then we should ask ourselves, is there a matching trend amongst STM publishers towards open communication? Is there and should there be? And my very short answer to that is, yes, there absolutely should be. Open communication gives us the chance for discussion, for collaboration, for idea generation. That's the way in which we will be part of conversations. That helps us to build our understanding of future needs and solutions. It's those very conversations that will help us to swing from vine to vine. 
So the good news, of course, as we've been hearing, is that publishers are beginning to move towards much more open communication. There are initiatives shooting up, um, and I have included a few on this slide, but there'll be plenty more within this room and outside of it. And there are lots of different ways of doing it. It's not a one-size-fits-all. We've heard about Elsevier's approach. We would also recognize the many other different ways, as Tom said, any publisher can join in this conversation. Here are the, some of the things that do exist. The individuals involved in social media. Sage Connection, set up in 2009. Elsevier Connect, we've heard of. And of course, uh, Wiley Exchanges, which is our fairly new initiative that, 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 we're, that we're offering. And what I thought I would do is share, because we have begun this journey, I thought I would share with you what we've learned so far. And that is that there is a really strong desire from researchers, librarians, and others to join in a conversation about the future, about what the future does look like. We checked just before we started this, and we did a research um, piece to talk to our various audiences about whether they were interested in this kind of conversation. And we had 15,000 people, 1,500 people respond to us. But from that, we had 1,800 comments so more than one comment per person about what they wanted to talk to us that was forward-facing, that looked towards the future. We're all fascinated by it right now because of the change that's happening. So we learned from that that publishers can facilitate and stimulate conversation. We launched Wiley Exchanges, and we are seeing a big growth um, in, our, in our unique visitors every month. In fact, they double every month. We've been going four months. We're at 14,000. We're pleased with that. It's a growing conversation. But those same audiences also told us that it's not a one-size-fits-all. They want a multifaceted approach. They want web, they want comment, they want social media, they want direct communication, events. It's a full blended approach, and that's what we're beginning to offer. But whilst those communication techniques might be common to us all, and I'm sure that they are, one of the things that we're trying to uh, make sure that we instill in our editorial group and in our, in our entire communication program is one of these basic principles that open communication is having the conversations, not necessarily having all the answers. And that for us is a bit of a change in thinking that actually it's about the quality of engagement, it's about the way we engage, and together we will get to the answers. We don't have to know everything first. And we're having some really interesting conversations. So one of the conversations we started to have was to ask our various uh, audiences, researchers, uh, librarians, and society executives, what are the trends that they think will revolutionize, have the potential to revolutionize academic research? And I'm going to show you some of the answers here. You'll notice these numbers don't add up to 100%. That's because we ask people to pick up to three. Um, and I'm showing you the top five. And the top five things were digital tools to enable more researcher collaboration, new approaches to funding research, digital tools to aid with research and writing, smart software for sorting documents, and automated tools to evaluate the strength of work and identify experts. And whilst this conversation is interesting to begin in, in, on itself, or by itself, what's also interesting are the difference between the different audiences. And one of my favorites is that librarians, 73% of librarians think that digital tools enabling researcher collaboration have a great potential to uh, revolutionize academic research, but only 43% of academics themselves actually believe in that, quite that same potential. So it is interesting. We are starting to have some interesting conversations, and this is the space in which we're having them on Wiley Exchanges. I'm not going to dwell very long on this. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a website, it's a blog, and we're having interesting discussions there. You can see that one of the first articles up there is about uh, reproducibility of data. That links directly back to uh, Gillard's quote that I started with. So Wiley Exchanges is an interesting uh, space where we're beginning to have these discussions. It's also a social media program, um, and we're starting to run events. We've run a couple of future-themed events, uh, all with the aim of an open, ongoing conversation about the future. The pictures you can see there are all of our, a, a cross-section of our authors, and they, in the same way that Tom was talking, are a combination of internal colleagues and external experts. And it's a nice blend of, of, um, of information there. 
So it's starting to happen and, and we're growing well and we have a, a, a strong programme for the future which is really important for us because we are really ambitious with this. The editorial group has a, a clear ambition for this programme and really it's about the belief that open conversations can spark change and innovation. It is really important that by having this conversation it takes us to a different place. And so that is how we are focusing, that's how we're trying to, to look at our programme. I think if we go back maybe a couple of years, maybe this was a, a perception of the STM industry. I need you to find a radically innovative new way to keep everything exactly the same. Perhaps that was a perception. If, that was, if there was even a small amount of truth in that perception, then Jack Welsh has a succinct summary of the dangers in it for us that if the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside, the end is near. Miserable though that seems, I do think that communication, and particularly open communication and conversation, gives us a way of starting to equalize the, the, the change which is happening externally with the change that can happen internally, outside of our industry and, and, and inside. So that's my hope for our open conversation, that it does start to spark change. It's not the only way that we're going to change and transform our, transform our businesses. Of course it's not, but it plays a strong supporting role. And so we do that by making sure that we are blending together colleagues and external experts, that the conversation is broad, that together we're sharing knowledge, we're sharing information, and we're sharing perspectives, so that ultimately we can build shared solutions of which STM publishers are an important part. At Wiley, this is a journey for us. We're testing, we're measuring, we're learning, and that's why I wanted to come and, and, and share, share this with you here. So we're looking at reach, engagement, range of contributions. We're trying to understand the changing needs in a changing world. And we're really trying to understand how we use what we're learning in these conversations back in our business. So I have one last slide for you, which has two parts. Firstly, please do come and join our conversation. An invitation for you all to come and join. Um, please do come and join us. Um, and secondly, it's a request to you to really share with us, either through Twitter or through email or any other route, even face-to-face -face in a coffee break, how is your organization using communication to support resilience and reinvention? So I'd like us to really start one of those open conversations here today. Thank you. Thank you.